Hello, gentle people, and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time visiting my channel, or if you are a returning subscriber, I hope that you will hear and see something that inspires you to create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, an entrepreneur, and every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop and my Shopify store. And right now I'm in the process of adding some new holiday and special occasion gifts to my shops each week. Uh, back in September, I checked and it was September of 2022, I received an order in my Etsy shop to create a coffee inspired chess checkers game. And as you can see from the insert, the customer requested, quote, kind of like sparkly coffee and cream, pearl glitter swirls. So being who I am and the way my brain works, I thought, what if I put some real coffee into her board? So I went to Walmart and I purchased a bag of whole coffee beans and a bag of ground coffee. Megan was truly surprised and pleased when she received her order and she wrote me a glowing five-star review. I have since made uh, two other coffee themed chess checker sets and as you can see I got a new order this week to make a coffee themed set. So in today's video I will share with you how I created this really cool and unusual chess checker set which makes a terrific birthday or holiday gift idea. And as always, if you like what you see but you don't want to take the time to make it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at SparrowArtVibes.Boutique. And also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, share, and if you're not a subscriber, by all means subscribe. Um, I post uh, a video every Wednesday. And um, well, I guess now let's take a look at the materials that we need to make this cool coffee inspired chess checker set. All right, let's take a look at the materials that we need for our very cool uh, coffee chess and checker set. So we need our chessboard mold. We will need the molds for our chess pieces. And again, I have two sets. I have two sets so that I can pour uh, both colors. So our chess, ooh, we'll move those. Our chess pieces. My checkers are individual checker pieces. They didn't come as a one piece. They came as individual pieces. And then of course we need resin. Craft Smart. Part A resin. Craft Smart Part B hardener. We need a small measuring cup and a large measuring bowl. We're using two colors of mica powder, so we need two paper cups, two stir sticks for those, one stir stick for that. We need our nitro gloves. For our mica powders, I am going to be using the May Spring uh, White Chal Sedone. Instead of using brown mica powders, all of my brown mica powders are so brown that you can't see the coffee beans or the coffee grounds. So instead of doing brown, I'm going with the bronze, and this is the Saya bronze. Um, this must be a Chinese company, I guess, because they send mica powders uh, in this box, but there is no color name 
on a label anywhere. But this is the brand. That's the brand Saya. And the color online is bronze. And then we need our coffee beans. So we have whole bean coffee. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts brand. It came out of Walmart. Okay, and then we need our ground. That says roasted ground coffee. And so that's it. Let's get all of this off the table and we will get started having fun. Let me just say a couple of things. I, I don't know how many chess sets I've made um, with this mold. Uh, this, I think, is like my third mold. I think this is my third one. Um, but what I can tell you to pay attention to is over time after you use the mold, it starts to look dull. These molds all have a shiny finish, but when you use them a lot, you kind of wear the finish off, I guess. So this is not shiny anymore. Um, the other thing to pay attention to is the sides of your molds. When your molds get old, when your molds get old, they start to lose their shape. So I don't know if you can tell from the camera angle there, but the side walls of this mold lean out. Um, this is an old mold, but again, it's start, the sides start to go outward. And so you don't have nice straight sides. So just be aware um, that these do have a lifespan. And when they get old, uh, you have to replace them. So the first thing we need to do is mix our resin. And we are only mixing resin to attach the coffee beans. And then after that uh, dries, I'll say, then we'll come back and we'll mix resin to put in the coffee grounds. But we are only mixing 20 milliliters and I always mark my measuring cups first. You can barely see that because these are, these are new cups. Ah. So we need 10 milliliters of our Part B hardener. Ten milliliters of the Part A resin. Okay, and I did not um, do my reminder. I am using the Craft Smart uh, cast, clear casting and coating resin. The instructions say for us to have a mixing ratio of equal parts of A and B. So you have a one to one mixing ratio, and that we should be mixing for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. And of course, <clears throat> and of course you can always fast forward through this. You don't have to watch me mix the resin. So, uh, before I start putting the resin down, first, we're going to open our coffee beans. start with the whole beans um, and I kind of sort through these and pick out 
the ones that are the flattest, the thinnest, uh, and also whole. So I'm going to set the beans there and then what we're going to do is just put a dab of resin in every other square just like if you were doing uh, the color, the colors for the board. We're just putting a dab in every other square and then we're going to go back and we're going to put the beans on these. Some of you may want to do your beans and your ground coffee at the same time. I do not advise that because that ground coffee is dusty and it will get into your other resin, into the coffee bean resin. And so my suggestion is you do it the way I'm doing it as um, separate steps. just to hold our beans in place and not have them get lost underneath our resin. And if you're saying, oh boy, she's got a lot left, that's because we're gonna go around the edge. But so then I simply start placing the beans. Some face up, some face down. I'm generally doing these in threes. Um, you can put as many as you want on your board. I just happen to have a preference for three. And remember, this is going to be flipped over. So as you're placing your beans, keep in mind that this is the bottom of the board that you're looking at. You're gonna be looking at it from the beans from the other side. So decide whether you want the round side of the beans to show or the open side of the beans to show. But I do these in threes. I just kind of like that look. You can do this with tweezers if it's faster for you. I just find that I can, with my fingers, just whole beans uh, you don't want cracked beans and chipped beans I mean maybe you do I don't know but so we're just going to and again you can do more than three if you want you can do just one I just happen to like three is like a really popular number see some dust um, on the board so I need these to be dried before I start working with the ground coffee beans. One thing I can tell you about doing this is these beans smell so good. Okay, and so now that all my squares are done, then I'm just going to take my stir stick and go along this border 
because I do want some beans along the border to kind of decorate when you're looking at that and we're not going to pour it we're just going to place it place some resin right along the edges here This is just to hold the beans in place so they don't move and shift and don't get lost underneath the resin. If they're thin enough, they can lay down. If they're not thin, then they can stand on their sides. individual and then kind of with a friend with a buddy they look lonely when they're by themselves and again just be mindful of the height of the beam because you may have to go back and sand that being down if it stands up above the edge of the mold. So keep that in mind. And then if you like see some places where you want to add more beans like this spot over here is kind of naked. Okay, so there we go. Each of our squares is done. And um, we're going to let this set for an hour or so. I usually don't do a heat gun on this. I just leave this like it is. And uh, we'll come back in a little while. And um, okay, so that's that. We'll be back in a little while. Okay, I am back. And I've done a couple of things, like fix my lunch, fix and eat my lunch. So now we are going to pour the ivory that goes behind uh, these beans. And think of the ivory as the cream. You have coffee and you have cream. But before we do our mixing and pouring, let's just clean up any drips I see here, any dust. Tape is always good. It'll pick up, pick up most everything. All right, we just want this as clean. Even a drip right there, we don't want that drip. We don't want that drip. All right, I think that's clean enough. Oh, no, there's a couple more. All right, so then, ordinarily, I mix 60 milliliters to do one color of squares. Uh, but because we pour 20 to do that, I'm only going to mix 40 this go round. And again, the beans are taking up a lot of the space. So, my measuring cup is marked at 20 and 40 milliliters. So, we need 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 
20 milliliters of the Part A resin. And we know that this is a five minute mix. I had the two large cups for the resin, but we don't need the large cups. This is only 40 milliliters, so I can mix that. I can color that in this cup. So we are just going to pour this into this cup. And then we are going to take our white chalcedone and again it says white but it really has a really ivory um, pearlescent ivory thing going on and we will mix that well And again, this is supposed to represent the cream. Um, at one point, I made something and my aunt said nobody would buy it. Oh, it was, um, no, it wasn't Redskins. What was it? It was, um, oh, Patriots. It was New England Patriots. I had made some coasters uh, for a customer who asked for New England Patriots. And when I showed it to my aunt, she says, well, nobody's going to buy that because those are not the right colors. And when I said, what do you mean they're not the right colors? She says, those are not the colors that the Patriots use. And I says, well, first of all, I'm not um, affiliated with the Patriots organization and I'm not licensed uh, to use their name or anything. So I, don't, I wouldn't have the exact colors that they use to begin with. Um, but it was just, and then I said to her, this is art. This is representative. So same thing here. Um, you know, you might be struggling with the colors that I'm choosing, but again, this is representative of the cream. And then the bronze will be representative of the coffee. And the coffee is not brown because if the coffee resin is used then you can't see the beans or the coffee grounds so there is a method to my madness and once this is mixed then you know I like to use my I color my hair so I use the L'Oreal what is this root rescue so I always save these bottles these bottles are great no reason for me to go out and purchase a bottle when I have these that I can use Recycle, baby. Recycle, reuse. All right, and then we're going to put our lid on here. And then we are just going to squeeze. And even though this is light, uh, the color from the beans will actually turn this a little darker it looks very ivory right now. And then when I pour the backing, the color for the backing, uh, it will darken. So it's not going to be ivory. It's not gonna look like milk.
I am just shy one, two, three squares. Oh no, I need to mix a little more resin. Okay, well, let me mix again. I normally do 60 because I did this already. I did 40, so now we have to do another 20. Alrighty, I ran out. I had one, two, three squares left. So off camera, I mixed some more of the white chalcedony resin to do these squares. And I did 20 because it's impossible to do 10 because there is no, let me show you. This measuring cup starts at 10 milliliters. 10 and 20, there is no five. And if you don't mix your resin accurately, you wind up with resin that's bendy, it doesn't cure properly. Um, you get a whole lot of problems if you don't have your resin mixed well. So I'm just going to, since I mix some more, just add some more to all of these squares and hope it doesn't run over. What happens if you overfill your squares, then your board is kind of, I don't know, what I want to say, lopsided. Let's just add some more. Since I mix some more, we'll add a little more to all of these. We don't need it, but we're not going to wait to start resin either. And I'm always talking about my table not being level and you can see that each of these has run this direction it didn't go back that way all of this ran this it's all filling on this side so you can see that my table is not um, level I don't worry about it for the squares I make sure I put popsicle sticks under when I get ready to pour the background. Did I do that one? Okay, and now the time consuming part of this. This is what takes the most time, is to now go back and square each of these. So you have to take um, I was using a toothpick at one point and discovered that I had scratched toothpicks. The wood scratches your mold. So don't use toothpicks. So I have this little silicon. Where's the set? I found this set of silicon makeup brushes. And they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. And I, these are perfect for my water slide um, paper when I'm doing dominoes and whatnot. But I discovered that these were also great for squaring because I can push and push and not worry about messing up my mold, the surface of my mold. So this is the time consuming part. And generally, I don't even talk when I'm doing this. I just sit here and I'm just pushing this resin to these corners, filling the lines and pushing to the corners. just say something else you have 30 minute working time with this resin and I'm clearly over the 30 minute mark but the thing is this is so thin such a small amount of resin that it's not heating up really quickly the more resin you have in the container the faster it heats up and the faster it sets so I'm not um, unaware of my working time Just know I have enough time to move 
all of these. Square these nicely. Okay, and then I'm just going to spin this so I can get to the other side there. Oh. All right, and I don't know if you can tell that this is, that's not flat, so I'm gonna put another cube. I have these cubes that I made when my daughter was telling me I should be doing um, crystal stuff. So I had made these cubes and I never sold them, but they come in nice, they're nice weights for my board. All right, so then we just double check to see if there are any spots that pulled away, like right here. And again, if this were flat, that wouldn't pull. There's a spot right there. I just hate if you overfill it, it makes a, it's a problem. Well, like one of these, which one of these? One of these is overfilled. Hold up. Okay, I guess it was good that I made a little bit more. All right, so all of our squares are square, are full and square. They all look good to me. I don't know how it looks to you on camera, on screen. So we're just going to cover this and allow this to set a couple of hours. I sort of work on a two hour time frame. In two hours this will be set enough that I can then add the um, ground coffee. The ground coffee beans. So now we're just going to put a heat gun to this to make sure there are no bubbles, no air bubbles in anything. And of course, anytime you heat resin, it expands. So if it wasn't tight in a corner, now that it's been warmed up a little bit, it will be. So let's cover this and allow this to um, set for a couple of hours and then I'll come back and I will add the ground coffee to the board. I am back. We're going to take the cover off of this. And that looks real good. Let's see. I see a couple of drops, a couple of drips, a couple of drops, drips. Uh, that one right there. That one right there. Yes, uh, everything else looks good. So what we need to do now is mix 20 milliliters so that we can do our coffee grounds. So again, cup is marked 10 and 20. So we are going to do Part B, hardener, 10 milliliters. Ah, uh, that's not level, let's see. Oh, that is 10. 
and then 10 milliliters of the Part A resin. Oops, is this container empty? Oh, oh, here it comes. And we're going to go ahead and just pour this resin into this cup and we'll mix it in the cup. Okay, and of course we know this is a five minute mix. Okay, so our resin is mixed. I'm just going to set that there and set that there. And then we need our ground coffee. And we are going to put our ground coffee directly into the resin. I've got two teaspoon bowls and let me stir that and see what that looks like I'm going to add another teaspoon full Ideally, I would want this to be a little thicker, but I've got some other stuff I have to do this um, evening, so I don't have the time to sit and babysit this and wait on this to thicken. So we're just gonna go with it like it is. And so you just wanna make sure that you have a nice mixture of your ground, your coffee grounds your ground coffee that every ounce by morsels I guess you can Ooh. I just messed that one up that oh, press, it. press it down maybe it'll stay all right so all we're going to do now is just a dollop of our coffee ground mixture I have that little drop right there. We're going to just leave it. If you try and wipe it off, you'll make a bigger mess. It's easier to just let that dry and then just peel it off.
And then I have just a tad, just a tad left. So we're going to take this little bit that we have left and drop it along these edges. putting it right on the edge so that it doesn't go over into the um, ivory, into the cream. I don't want it to get into the cream, so if you put it along the edge and let it just drop, So that's that. We will let that set. Um, again, I only put the cover on it when I've got uh, resin that like so. This we can leave just like it is and let this dry. And we just want to wipe any resin that's on the edges here. Wipe our edges clean. So we will leave this and um, come back in a little while and then we will do the mix the bronze and we'll cover the rounds with the bronze. Uh, because this is a different mixture from that, I am going to hit this with the heat gun real quick because I do see air bubbles in these. anything on my lines so I'm just pushing that back Go over here you just move some of that we'll leave that be back in a little bit I am back and we need to now pour the bronze and remember I had that little spot right there and I said we weren't going to we weren't going to try and smooth it out we were just going to pick it up like so so again don't spend a whole lot of time um, and then this, because I took the little thingy off, this one square ran. We're gonna pick that up and we're just going to when I um, mix the clear resin. Before I put the color in it, we're just going to resin that back in place. Um, but yeah, that's the board. That's the board. All right, so we we are doing another 60. So 30 and 30. 30 milliliters of the Part B hardener. of the Part A resin.
and we have our five minute uh, timer. So we've got another cup <clears throat> and we're going to just pour this resin into this cup. And then we're going to add our say a bronze mica powder. And once this is mixed, then I'm just going to pour it into my trusty hair color bottle. Alright, and as I said, this is the time-consuming part. You'll notice I didn't touch that one. Remember I put resin, clear resin under that um, to stick that back on the surface there. So I'm just giving that a couple of minutes to like adhere, I guess. Okay, so we are ready to once again start squaring these. And so like I said, this little silicone brush is perfect. Because you can put it right on the surface of the mold and it is not going to scratch it. Alrighty, so here we go. Let's get to squaring these off. takes me about 45 minutes. And when people say, you know, they think your prices are too high, that's because they don't know how much time it takes to create whatever it is they're interested in buying. This is not a machine doing this, this is me doing all of this by hand.
Okay, so now I need to just um, rotate this so I can do the other side. This ran over, so we're just going to go just like this and move this. Okay, and then we go back and check all of our squares. Now, let me just say, I've watched people um, pour one color then pour another color but if you like have this situation where this ran over you cannot wipe it out if the other color is wet as well so we're just going to go in there and wipe that off because again you want to keep your lines as clean as possible Okay, let's hit this with the heat gun and then we'll clean up anything we need to. All right, so what is happening here, let me just tell you what you're looking at. And I'll have to come back later. These beans are heavy and so they are pulling weighting down the squares on this side. So I'm gonna to have to come back after this begins to set and move. Mm. I don't finish sentences. I'm going to have to come back once this starts to set and then I can move that because it will stay in place. Same thing in this corner here. Saying don't overfill, um, and then once the resin is heated, this resin thins out and it will go, it will seek the lowest point. All right, and then I have my one square back there to do. So this is done and then I have to come back where this ran over the edge here and over the edge in that corner but I need to let this set some because it's still real liquidy and if it sets then when you move it it will stay put. And heat gun on that square. Over those bubbles. Okay, so that's what we're working with. Where's my cover? All right, gentle people, I am back. Let's uncover this. I did come back in here and I did clean uh, the resin out of this corner and out of that corner um, so everything looks good and so now we're going to pour the background and so 
We need 600 milliliters, so I have 300 and 600 marked right there. Let me move this over. I don't want to have happen what happened earlier when I put that paper on there and it got stuck and made a big old mess. So, Craft Smart Part B Hardener, 300 milliliters. And then 300 milliliters of the Part A resin. And we know with our resin that we do a five minute mix. I will start the timer at set it for five minutes. So we are going to again use our May Spring White Chalcedone. And we're going to put a generous amount of mica powder in there because I want it to be opaque. But to this, I am going to tint it a little bit with the, uh, say, a bronze that we have. So I'm going to add just a little bit of bronze in there to darken that some. All right, so let's put this back over here. sticks here. 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 All right. Make sure this is thoroughly mixed. simply going to pour this right into the center. And again, you can see, even with the popsicle sticks, that more of this is on this corner than there is on that corner. And that all looks pretty even. To pop the air bubbles, we'll cover this and allow it to cure overnight. All right, where is my cover? And there we are. Hello again, gentle people. 
it is the next day, so we're going to take the cover off of this. And my favorite part of working with resin when I'm using molds uh, for like beverage coasters and whatnot is to see what the finished product um, looks like. So we are going to unmold this. So again, that's what our back looks like. And let's see the front. All right, that's pretty. Coffee beans and coffee grounds. I like that. All right, I am so pleased. This looks so nice. That really looks nice. Now I had, do you remember when I had the paper stuck to the one spot and I tried to, um, I don't know what I wanna say. I tried to put that back down. Let me get close. I was trying to get the paper off of it. And so I've got a little spot right there that I am going to try to sand that line out. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and sand that line out before I do my clear coat. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't like that. Where the brown where the bronze kind of ran underneath the ivory. Yeah, I do not like that. So I'm gonna try and sand that out. Okay, and the other thing, uh, on the back side, we have beans that are sticking up um, when we put the rubber bumps on it raises it so it's not a big deal but yeah we've got to sand those beans down so let me change the tip on here and I think I told you uh, if you watched one of the other videos let me just put these here um, when you are using these bands or if you are using, um, like when I'm using the big uh, sander, these all come with numbers on the back. That one says 60. And so the lower the number, the more abrasive it is. And you use the lower numbers to remove stuff. Like if you want to take varnish or paint off of something, you go with the lower numbers. The higher the number, the finer. So this 240 would be used to like polish something. So 80 is to remove, this is to smooth, this is to finish, this is to polish, basically. So the lower the number, the more abrasive. So we're going to switch this, switch this out to an 80 so we can knock these beans down. If I can get the bag open. So yeah, this has, this is coarse. see it I have a little bit of ivory on this brown square here I'm gonna see if I've got a marker that's um, that color now, 
I don't know why I grabbed gold. I know I don't need gold. This is going to be too dark. That's more red. That's probably as close as I'm going to get. And so what we need to do now is just put the clear coat on here to completely seal this. And again, where I where that paper stuck and when I pulled it up, the resin actually pulled away from the mold. It left a little hole. Well, now that I've sanded that, I've got to get a new camera set up so that I can just zoom in and not have to get up and move around. But right there, light hitting it right. Okay, so I've sanded that and I've used the razor to clear. Let me turn the light. Maybe like turn the light this way. Okay, now I think you can. Now I think you can see it. Yeah, where that pulled up. So I've cleaned that, um, and so now we can go ahead and do our clear coat. And for our clear coat, we need 100 milliliters of um, resin. My cup has been marked. So we need 50 milliliters of the Part B hardener. Fifty milliliters of the Part A resin, be pouring on um, and I do not tape off just in case you were wondering I do not tape off my chess boards because the resin is not allowed to run down on the sides so since it's not running down on the sides I don't have to really worry about taping this so in case you were wondering why that's not taped that would be the reason why uh, I'm always putting popsicle sticks under these because I know my table is not level but someone said I actually probably should show you that uh, we do check so it's level that way and then you see it's totally off it's totally off this way Okay, so that is level that direction, but when you turn it that direction, it's like new, no, new, no, new, no, new. No. So I know if I put a stick, all right. Someone said I should show uh, that I do check to see that it is level. So that's what I'm doing. 
I love suggestions from viewers because it helps me improve my presentation. I don't care, there's always something, always something in the air that kind of blows on your work. All right, so we're just going to pour this. Then I like to use a, um, what do you call these things? Palette knife, I can't think. Getting older, I just had a birthday in September and I think it's starting to show. My recall is, what's that stuff advertised on TV, Prevagen or something? problem here that I did not anticipate. Hold up. Where I sanded that, that's a different, where I sanded that, that's a different color. folks hold up I'm going to try and wipe the resin out of the off of this and in the same way that I colored in that one circle that one ivory spot to make it match let me go see if I can uh, if I have a ivory marker, something like to color that. Oh no, my ivory marker is dried up. Oh shitty. Okay, well I can't use that. Let's try a little. not anticipate that all right so let's get this uh, spread out on here like we're supposed to and so where I pour it in lines I then spread it diagonally I find I get better coverage if I spread diagonally heat gun to pop air bubbles and you know when you heat resin it expands and so this is your opportunity to now see spots like I missed a spot there a whole little section right there that I missed And now, oops, now you can very carefully move this resin right to the edge. You do not want the resin to spill over. Again, this is not taped on the back. heat gun again and then just go through and inspect okay see I've got a spot right here that I missed all right and one more one last pass of the heat gun All 
right. And so we are going to cover this and allow this to cure. Done. All right, all right, all right. Let's take this cover off. That is stunning. Oh yeah, that's like if you go into um, uh, a restaurant and they have the, the countertops and the countertops have like sometimes um, labels, sometimes coins. That's what this looks like. So let's get rid of our trusty cups. And take a look see. That is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. So the only thing we have left to do now is to put on our 3M rubber bumps. Because they are rubber, they will last forever, and they are also non-skid. So let's flip this bad boy over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so our board is ready for us to put our pieces on. And the pieces are done. I poured them uh, separately on a different table. So you can see that um, all of the pieces all of the pieces have coffee beans inside all of them have each of the pawns has one coffee bean and then the um, the checkers or the copper and they have coffee grounds. I don't know if the camera can get that. Coffee grounds inside them. And the ivory pieces have coffee beans. Interestingly enough, the beans show up better on the back side than they do on the front. But we have coffee beans inside the ivory ones or the cream ones. And we have coffee grounds inside the coffee ones. So um, yeah, I poured these uh, separately off camera just to have all of this uh, finished at one time. So here is our coffee inspired uh, or coffee themed chest checkers board with our whole coffee beans in the ivory and uh, coffee grounds in the brown. That's it, we're done. I love it. This just looks, this looks so nice. This, this is like a piece of glass on top of this. That is so smooth and so clear and not a single bubble 